Today at Speedy's Garage, we're gonna be working on a new project, the 2016 Hellcat, dubbed Go Man Go. This video will be a two for one since it's so simple. We're gonna go through how to do an oil change, as well as how to get rid of those dusty front brake pads. Those who are at Challenger Fest this year already knew that I sold Orange Crush and picked this car up. For those of you that weren't, that's exactly what we did. The technology in the Hellcat had been calling my name for quite a while, and when they came out with the Go Man Go orange color, I had to bite the bullet. Thanks to Lee at Law Kemper Motors for yet another very, very easy car deal. If you guys are looking for anything, be sure to give Lee at Law Kemper a call first. I can almost guarantee you he'll have what you need at a very fair price, and within three or four emails, you'll have the deal worked out. And with that said, we're gonna get started with the oil change first. You're obviously gonna need some oil. The Hellcat engine takes zero W40. I picked up two five quart jugs. It's cheaper to get the five quart jugs than it is to buy individual ones. The Hellcat engine takes between six and seven quarts. The manual specifically says six, but I've been reading online that it can take more than that to get the dipstick where it needs to be. You're also going to need a oil filter. I personally like the Pure Later Pure One oil filters. If you use these, it's PL12222 for the part number. You're gonna need a funnel. Uh, oil filter removal tool. This is the kind that goes on a 3 8 ratchet. I really like those. Torque wrench, 3 8 drive ratchet, a 13 and 15 millimeter socket, a plastic uh, rivet removal tool. I'm going to use an impact driver to get the front uh, splash shields off, and you'll need a 10 millimeter and 7 millimeter socket for those. You're also going to need a drain pan and some rags. And optionally, you can use a creeper like I'm gonna do. I'm too old to be climbing up and down on the ground, sliding underneath the car. On the oil, I chose Mobile One this time because it was quite a bit cheaper than the Pennzoil Platinum I would normally use. Both Mobile One and Pennzoil Platinum are very good oils in my opinion. Um, this is one of those things people tend to get obsessive about and overthink quite a bit and start worrying about boutique oils and all kinds of other things. I want something that's cheap and easy to get a hold of when I need it, and I can pick this up locally just about anywhere, very reasonably priced. So I just interchange between Mobile One and Pennzoil Platinum, uh, depending on which one's cheaper at each oil change. There's quite a few fasteners that hold the splash shields on on this Challenger. I'm going to start with the 10 millimeter rear ones. And next, I'm gonna move on to the seven millimeter on the front part of the air dam. And you only have to remove these if you're planning to drain the oil cooler, which I am. Finally, I'm gonna move on to the plastic push pins. All in all, there were 19 fasteners holding those two splash shields in place. You have your four 10 millimeter, your five seven millimeter, and your 10 plastic body push pins. I guess with this car rated at close to 200 miles an hour, Dodge didn't want to take any chances of the front splitter or splash shields coming off the car. And reinstall your drain plug and torque it to 20 foot pounds. And at this point, I like to go ahead and loosen the oil filler cap. I don't take it all the way out, it's one thing to fall in there. When I find loosening it will usually help the oil pour a little smoother and avoid some of the mess that can happen when it uh, glugs or whatever you want to call it. We're going to start with the oil pan and it's a 13 millimeter bolt. Remember righty tighty lefty loosey. And you want to do this with the car at operating temperature so be aware that it could be a little warm. Now 
I don't see any glitter or metallic issues in the oil, so that's good. This is the braking oil change, as I might have mentioned, a thousand miles on the oil. It's a little dirtier than I would have expected, so it's good that we're changing it. But now we're just going to let that drain until we just get one drip about every 10 seconds, and then we'll reinsert the oil drain plug. With the oil drained, clean off your drain plug. Make sure the rubber O-ring is still on the plug and not stuck to the oil pan. Clean off the oil pan and reinstall your drain plug and torque it to 20 foot-pounds. Next, we want to drain the oil cooler system. And it's done through a port in front of the passenger side front wheel. And it's a 15 millimeter bolt on the end of an aluminum tube. The problem is the tube's a little bit, a little bit flexible. So you need to support it with another wrench because you don't want to twist the aluminum tube or break a tab that it's connected to before you try to loosen the bolt. Once you break it free, just get your oil pan in place. And it's the same procedure as draining the actual oil pan. And if you're a bit OCD like me, now's a good time to clean up the splash shields while you're waiting for the oil cooling system to drain. And again, once you're only getting one drip about every 10 seconds, go ahead and wipe the end of your port off and reinsert your bolt. Again, use your bracing wrench and you want to tighten it to 20 foot pounds, just like the oil pan bolt. Now remember, these are steel bolts going into aluminum housings. Same for the oil pan. So you don't want to over tighten it. If you do not have a torque wrench, just make it snug, but not too tight. And even though the service manual says it's not necessary, I do go ahead and pre-fill the oil filter with fresh oil and let it soak into the material. It's just a safety precaution against a dry startup and it's easy to do on the Challenger since the oil filter hangs straight down. So why not? And then go ahead and put a little fresh oil around the gasket. And that prevents it from sticking for your next oil change, make it easier to come off. Next, you wanna remove the oil filter. I found using an extension works the best, gives you plenty of room. And you wanna have your oil pan ready just in case. Okay, this being my first oil change on the Hellcat, I ran into a problem. The PL12222 filter, it's the correct part number, it's the one Pure Later lists for the car. But when I pulled the factory filter off, I realized it was tiny compared to the size of the factory filter. So I went and grabbed a Mobile One M1-210, and it's the same size as the factory filter. And you can see it's a, I mean, there's a massive difference. I would say the whole area outside of that gasket is extra material. Plus it's about a quarter inch to a half inch taller. So don't use this filter. I'm not going to use a undersized filter on this car for sure. And I'm actually going to email Pure later and find out what the deal is. But for now, until they get their situation squared away, it'll be a Mobile One M1-210. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it with oil just like I did the other one. Let that absorb into the filter material and then we'll get it installed on the car. On the oil filter, just thread it back on by hand. And if you filled it with oil like I did, don't spin it too fast. You want to make a mess. And I always do it hand tight, plus a quarter turn. And that's it. And now just fill the engine with six quarts of oil. Thunderstorm. Good day to be in the garage working on the car. <laughs> With the six quarts of oil poured back into the engine, go ahead and reinstall your filler cap and then fire up the car to check for any leaks. So visually inspect the cooler bolt. No oil there. I'm gonna check the oil drain pan. No oil there, that's good. Finally, oil filter. No oil there, so we're good to go. 
Now we just need to reinstall the belly pans, the reverse of removal. And I'm gonna use some of the push pins to hold it in place while I get the bolts ready. Don't over tighten these, it doesn't take much. Remember, it's just plastic. And on the rear belly pan, I found it easier to start it from the front and then start my two rear bolts to hold it and then put all four bolts in to tighten. Here's another look at the actual factory filter versus the Purelator Pure One PL12222. And that's just ridiculous. I'm gonna send them a picture of that, find out what's up. So check the oil level on the dipstick. And with six quarts in there, mine needs a little bit more. It's just on the very bottom of the hash marks. So I'm gonna add just a little bit. Now hopefully you can see that. That's what you're looking for. I like mine to be right at the top of the hash marks. So now we're good to go. I put about another half a quart in. So mine took six and a half quarts. And that's all there is to an oil change on a Hellcat. Now we'll move on as promised to getting rid of those dusty brakes. So here's the problem I'm looking to solve. I detailed these wheels exactly 100 miles ago. 100 miles, that's it. And you can see how much brake dust is on them in that 100 mile period. It's only the front brakes. The rear ones aren't near as bad. So I'm only gonna do the fronts and leave the rears alone. But you can see how much dust is generated in that short amount of time. That's just crazy. I've never seen brakes dust as bad as these. So I did some research and it seems these Z26 pads from PowerStop get the thumbs up from most folks. Uh, excellent braking performance and almost zero dust, which is exactly what I'm looking for. To get this done, I'm gonna use uh, my impact with a 21 millimeter protected socket. Uh, you can do this by hand, obviously. I got a pry bar just in case one of the spring clips gives me trouble. A 13 millimeter socket for the caliper through bolt. Some blue Loctite for the caliper through bolt. A punch to remove the pins on the spring clips. A rubber mallet. You don't want to ding up your uh, pretty red Brembo calipers. A couple of torque wrenches. One will be for the through bolt and the other will be for the lug nuts. And a, just a regular socket. Now you guys are going to laugh but I've literally got a toothbrush out so that I can clean the caliper when I've got it all uh, disassembled. And hopefully it'll stay nice and clean with the new pads. I'm also gonna use my stool to sit on, obviously, and a jack and jack stand for getting the car off the ground. And there's the car safely supported. I've got it sitting on the jack stand with the jack there as backup. And I say this in just about all of my videos, never work on a car with it just on the jack. That's dangerous, the jack can fail and crush you, so do not do it. I'm gonna start by removing the wheel. Next, we're gonna drive the retainer pins out of the caliper. You wanna be very careful not to chip or nick your caliper. I like to do the top one first. And as you saw, I had to hit it from a couple of different angles to get it to come loose. Now we can do the bottom one in the same fashion. The bottom one will be much easier because the spring tension is now released. Next, you want to remove the 13 millimeter bolt that's on the back side of the through pin. And this one seems to be a bit stuck, so rubber tape. Now the through pin comes out. Now you can just squeeze really hard on the pads against the caliper and it'll back the pistons off enough for you to wiggle them out. There's what they look like from the factory. So now I'm using some cleaner. I'm gonna clean up the calipers real good while well, they're all easy to get to. I put a bucket underneath them to catch all the debris. Now that we got the caliper all cleaned up, we can put the new power stop pads in. They include a very small packet of, of uh, brake quiet grease. And it's designed to keep anything from squeaking. 
The factory brakes didn't have any on there, but since they included it, I used the factory brakes as a reference and kind of put some where the three pistons would touch, and then I'll do some on the pins as well. If you use it, just be careful not to get any of it on the actual pad material. And then you just slide the pads in. Next, we'll go ahead and put your through bolt in, the retaining bolt. Don't forget to put some blue Loctite on the nut on the back side. And finally, you want to try to torque it. I did search and could not find any torque specs for this particular bolt, so I made a, a judgment call based on it being a 13 millimeter, and I chose 25 foot-pounds. If someone ever finds the torque spec, I'd appreciate you let me know what it is. But that ought to get the job done. Next, you're gonna put your spring clip back in. And if you didn't pay attention to how it came out, there's a little arrow on it right here that tells you this way is up, so the short end goes towards the top. And since the top gave me a little trouble coming out, I'm gonna try putting it in first, and then the bottom second. Use your rubber mallet to just tap the pin in. Obviously, they go in from the back. Yeah, that was way easier. Put the bottom one in second. So make sure the spring clips lined up evenly on the pins. And it should be in the little grooves. And that's all there is to swapping out the brakes. Now I did reuse the factory pins and spring clip. These brakes only have about a thousand miles on them. So I just went ahead and reused that. But the power stop brakes uh, brake pads did come with new pins and a new spring clip. I just cleaned up the factory ones and decided to reuse it. And while you got the wheel off, you might as well go ahead and wash them. They're nasty. 100 miles and all that black came off of this one wheel. So I went ahead and washed it front and back and hopefully the new pads will prevent that from happening again. Now just remount your tire and always run the lug nuts down by hand. And give them a few taps with the impact on the lowest setting that it has. Do it in a star pattern. Finally, just lower the car so it's back on its own weight. And tighten your lug nuts in a star pattern to 110 foot pounds. And anytime I do brake work on any vehicle, I always go for a nice controlled slow drive somewhere safe where I'm not in traffic to make sure everything's functioning properly. And finally, I'm going to follow the power stop bed in or brake in procedure to make sure the brakes are functioning as they intend. It's basically doing five moderate to aggressive stops from 40 miles an hour down to 10 miles per hour in rapid succession, rapid succession, a little hard to say fast, uh, without letting the brakes cool but do not come to a complete stop. You don't want to uh, sit with the pads on a hot rotor and have them imprint, so don't do that. And then do five moderate stops from 35 mile an hour down to five mile an hour in rapid, rapid succession, there's that word again, without letting the brakes cool. Uh, you should expect to smell some resin as the brakes get hot. And then after this, just drive around at normal speed without getting on the brakes for about five minutes to cool them back down, and that's all there is to it. One other thing to keep in mind is that you push the pistons in the calipers a little bit when you're removing and installing the new pads. So you're going to go ahead and pump up the brakes until they get firm again before you fire the car up for the first time. And here are the wheels after 500 miles of city driving as well as some very aggressive driving. And there's very little dust. Much better than the factory pads. So now the answer to the million dollar question whether the PowerStop Z26 pads will work as well as the factory pads. We're gonna go find out.
Okay, so that was really kind of the, the missing piece is finding out when you upgrade these brakes, or I shouldn't say upgrade, swap them out, if they perform as well as the, the OEM. The speed limit is 45 miles per hour. Okay, okay, good God, somebody's always nagging me. Anyway, as I was saying, the big question that I never see answered is after you swap out these brake pads, is the braking performance as good as the OEM pads was? So I wanted to go out and, and actually find out. So I ran several tests. I did three stops, panic stops in a row from 60 miles an hour. And I used the built-in zero, I'm sorry, 60 to zero timer to measure it. And then I confirmed it with a roller wheel that actually is used at accident scenes and things of that nature to check distances. And what I found was with the factory pads, three panic stops, and I did this test uh, twice in a row. Uh, the first stop was 123 feet, the second stop was 134 feet, and the final stop was 144 feet. And I repeated that test and it was within a foot of each of those. I let the, let the brakes cool off, drove around for about five minutes and then repeated it. And when I did that, I would accelerate to 60 and then mash the brakes and uh, go from 60 to zero as fast as I could and just take off again and do it again. Swapped out the pads to the PowerStop Z26, came back out to the exact same location in similar weather conditions, and I ran the test twice. It was kind of odd. I, I did the bed-in procedure for the pads as they, as they dictated in the paperwork, and I went over that earlier. Um, the braking performance on the street feels exactly the same. Zero brake dust as you saw. The first braking test gave me some odd results. I, I, the first stop was like 176 feet. The second stop was 182 feet and the final stop was 197 feet. And I could feel the pad felt a little mushy. Uh, not what I was used to on the street for sure. So I let the car cool for about five minutes while I changed some things up, um, preset cameras and things of that nature, nothing on the car. I just reset some electronics and I wanted to re, uh, redo the test again. And this time it stopped in 143 feet on the first hit, 147 feet on the second hit and 152 feet on the third and final hit. So I don't know if maybe some of the pad material um, came off and got on the brake rotor itself and it made the braking performance uh, improve dramatically. Uh, that's really what happens when you're doing that bed-in procedure. So maybe their paperwork doesn't have you do it aggressive enough. If you remember from my video that we did on the RT where we went to the bare brakes, they had you do some pretty serious braking uh, to get those, those uh, pad material uh, transferred over to the rotor so that you had a really nice friction surface, uh, the, the two working together to give you maximum braking performance. And in that car, the brakes were phenomenal. I was able to stop that RT, excuse me, in about, I think, 100 feet, just over and over and over again. So this Challenger's, uh, the Hellcat's a little bit heavier than my RT was. The RT weighed about 4,100 pounds. I need to go weigh this one, which is what I'm on my way to do now. I'll do it with a full tank of gas, and we'll see what it weighs. But I'm guessing about 4,400, and that weight matters. So. Bottom line, I think the power stop brakes work just about as good as the factory pads. Maybe not quite as good, so if you're going to a road course or something, keep your factory pads and you can swap them back and forth. But on the street, I see absolutely no difference. And even under high performance braking conditions, they were very, very close. So again, 123 feet was the best I got out of the factory pads. Uh, 144 was the worst after the three stops. And then with the power stops, uh, 100 and what I say, 143 feet on the first stop. I've got it written down. And then the final stop was like 152. And then I went back and confirmed it uh, using the roller tool to make sure that the braking distance tool in the car, the little gauge, was actually accurate. And I found that it was actually. You saw the, the photograph of the tool or the little video of the tool that I, I put in there. Um, ended up right about 142, 143 feet. So exactly what you would expect. So I see no downsides to changing out these brakes, and with a major upside being no more dust. So that's it for today. We're going to go out and turn some fuel into noise, enjoy the car a little bit. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit subscribe at the bottom right corner, and be sure to check out my website, www.speediesgarage.net, for more information and to see what we end up doing with this Challenger Hellcat.